Hey! Cheers, Drew. I like the mug, man. Thank you. This is like vintage Chip and Dale action here. Thought about spicing it up today a little bit. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm not spicing up anything. I got my old faithful here. So. Well, if it ain't broke. That's right. Keep trying to break it. And it never will be. That's what they say. Because it's Contigo. <laughs> Unofficial sponsor. No, not really at all. Um, so. We have a, uh, an idea, a concept for today's video. We do. You know, sometimes when we sit down for right nows, um, often I would say, it's like, uh, what are we talking about today? <laughs> like, what? We know we have to shoot it every Monday and Wednesday. It's um, never like that. And uh, you know, part of the creative process, for those of you who don't know, is you have to come up with every idea for every video you shoot. So um, sometimes um, we have a difficult time just magically coming up with ideas. Sometimes. So we'll bat them around a little bit. This one was uh, a little more thoroughly planned than most, but um, you know what we did is we came up with a concept, an idea, bulleted out some thoughts, and if there's really good conversation, we get good comments. Maybe we'll turn it into like a more formal video, like long term. And if there's anything, any topics that you think might have a good opportunity to be kind of workshopped here, and then maybe uh, mm. turned into something a little bit more robust later down the road, and like yes. a fountain pen one on one or something like that, mm. do let us know. We want to have our library be a service to you guys. Indeed. So this idea, the inspiration about um, what do you tell someone when you gift them a fountain pen for the first time, especially if they don't have a lot of experience with fountain pens. Maybe yeah. they're interested enough. You're not just like blind to like, here, here's this burden of a product that you now have to learn a lot about. Right. But if somebody's like, hey, I'm kind of interested, and you're like, ooh, I want to get you a fountain pen. But they're like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, so what I do think you tell that, them? Yeah, I think that most of us here have tried to, and if you're a fountain pen fan, I'm sure that most of you have tried to get someone else into it by kind of, uh, you know, either letting them have one of yours or buying them an affordable fountain pen to get started with. Yeah. And there are always things that you miss. Either, you know, there are the things that you miss and they, that you don't cover and you wish you should have covered, or yeah. you might cover too much and totally and overwhelm and frighten them, which is oh, probably yeah. why they haven't approached it in the first place. So you gotta mm -hmm. keep that in mind they haven't already gone out on their own to get a fountain pen. So yeah. you need to understand why they haven't done that yet and how you can make sure you tiptoe around that. I'm glad you brought that up because I've done both of these. Yes, yeah, so have I. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So what's your success rate in terms of like people in your life you've been able to like convert One to One out of probably pens? 10. Okay, yeah, that's I'm, probably about where I'm at too. Yeah. Yeah, it's not for everybody, really. No, and I'm, I don't know if you know this, but I'm a pretty excitable person. No. So now I know. Get I know. out of here. I'm just like, I love these, so you need to love them too. And I just can't that help. That can come off but... as a little intense, maybe. Mm. Somebody's like, I don't know that I want to be like you. I know. Maybe I shouldn't take your recommendation. Yeah. I feel that way about everything, though. If I love something, yeah. I'm like, everyone needs to love this as much as me. And they need to kind of yeah, fair enough. take that down. I think most fountain pen people are pretty much like that. If you get oh, really good. into it, you're like, this made my life so much better. I want to make your life better too. Here you go. Ah, right, but sometimes they, the pen. sometimes they don't get that. So we're going to talk about how to strategically yes. do it, giving them the right information that they need to succeed while also making sure that it's curated and just what they need. Yes. So I bulleted out some thoughts here. We're just going to workshop it a little bit. Um, we can banter. We have not rehearsed this ahead of time. So um, you really get to be part, part of the creative process here. So one of the first things is like really try to cover the basics. Like what is a fountain pen? Yeah. Like how does it even work? Because a lot of times I tell people like, oh yeah, I'm into fountain pens. They're like, is that the thing with the feather on it? And I'm like, nope, that's a quill. You're back like a hundred years too yeah. far. Like travel, time travel with me a little bit. And you have to explain a little, just, a, just the basics. You don't need all the nerdy details. But just like, yes, it's a pen that uses like liquid ink, like yep. water ink. Yep. That's how it flows. It doesn't have a refillable, you know, refill like you would with a with a rollerball. Right, keep it simple. Because like I mean, really at its core, fountain pen physics are simple, but they're kind of complicated in their simplicity. But really, yeah. you can keep it on the simple side. And I also always forget to tell people, a lot of the starter pens, you know, the good first time pens are uh -huh. snap caps, but I have let people use some of mine. And always oh yeah, just, the screw you cap. Know, I always need to remind them that. Yeah, like, just hey. remind them like Because really, there aren't, there aren't a lot of other pens that do that that aren't fountain pens. That Generally, that's true. Yeah. 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 Um, explaining <clears throat> just the, the type of ink. Like, basically, is it a cartridge or does it have a converter or some other filling mechanism? Like, do you need cartridges or do you need bottled ink? So just helping them understand that concept. Like, the ink is water-based. 
You can use cartridges, and if you're giving them cartridges, that's fine. That's really easy to explain. Cartridges are a good idea. Yeah, especially for somebody just coming over, but if they're getting a little deeper and you give them a bottle, then you're gonna have to explain a little bit of how to actually fill it. So um, just showing the basics of how to fill it and explaining like how it works, you know, because obviously if you give a piston pen like a Twisby Eco, that's gonna be different than the like aerometric style squeeze converter of the Pilot Metropolitan. It is really easy to show though. So that's one yeah. thing that the Eco does have going for it. It's very obvious what is happening inside this guy. And cartridges, I think, are a great way to start. However, I found that a lot of folks when they first receive a gift fountain pen anyway, because they're yeah. not the ones that have requested this thing. Or maybe they have, maybe I don't they know. Have. Um, I think that what I'm thinking of is when they have it, and you're like, hey, try this. Hmm. They're probably not going to use it a ton if they haven't actually requested, hey, I want a fountain pen for my birthday or Valentine's Day, yeah. which is coming up. Um, they might not write with it a lot, which with a cartridge means that, well, with anything, it'll mean that it could dry out, or yeah. it could need cleaning more regularly. And if you just get them a cartridge with no converter, it's a little bit more difficult to clean mm. it. With a, with a converter, That's you're true. also getting a kind of built-in cleaning method as well, because you're That's probably not going to give them a bulb syringe or anything like that. Unless you really are hardcore about it, you know. That bulb syringe seems to be like the tipping point for That's, when you're yeah, like that into I wouldn't, it. I wouldn't start <laughs> off with that. Giving him a pen and then Warming what they shape. know is like some oh. sort of ear nose sucker thing might not be the best way to begin. True, unless they like really seem to get it. You need to softball that. Um, before it gets to that point though, I think just explaining like, you need to fill the pen. Like even just as basic as yeah. that, I mean, I can't tell you the number of times you've had somebody either buy a pen or be given a pen. They're like, my pen doesn't write, or it didn't come with any ink. And you're like, well, yes, like the ink is kind of separate. Yeah. It's sort of like if you buy a straight razor, like you also need to buy like shaving cream. You know, it's like- or, the, And razors. The two, yeah, and razors, like the two need to be, used together, but doesn't necessarily like always come with it. Yeah. So, um, and then just like understanding that the ink is going to run out faster than a ballpoint or a right. roller ball. I think what happens a lot of times when people start using a fountain pen for the first time, it's like, it's their one new special pen. So they tend to use it more consistently than they would any other single roller ball or ballpoint, I think, because I've seen this before. People who have ballpoints and roller balls, they have a bunch of them just laying around. They'll pick one up, they'll right. use one here and there and everywhere. They don't really keep track of how quickly it runs out of ink. So when they start using a fountain pen and it's the one pen that they're using, it'll run out of ink quicker than right. they may have realized. And then there's otherwise. that point where it's running out and it begins to write not so great. Yeah. And then they're like, well, this thing sucks. I'm just gonna leave this yeah. one alone. And then that's where it can really dry out and get nasty. Exactly. Like right and when it just it just has enough ink for it to get crusty. And you can get like the pressing and the scribbling yeah. and the stuff like you a lot would of think, bad things can like happen. Like you would think like with a ballpoint like it's getting dried up or whatever. Press down harder. You press down and you can ruin the nib. I've had that happen a number of times right. with people I've given pens to. So even just explaining like okay you're going to need to fill it when it starts to run out. Here's how to check it. Whatever the given pen here's how to check the ink level. Should be right. pretty basic. Try to give them a pen, you know, especially a pen that has like an ink window or something mm -hmm. um, is super helpful there. Um, and then just explaining like it's going to need to be cleaned at some point, <laughs> you know, every right. two to four weeks or something like that. I think covering just like how to generally hold the pen is important. Yeah. Some people don't know which side of the nib goes yeah, up. Yeah, no, I've given pens to a lot of people and they immediately go with the feed facing upward. Yeah, and you're like, nope, shiny side up. Yep, shiny, shiny side, side towards the sky. To the sky. That's, shiny side to the sky. <laughs> as Brian Gray would say. Um, is that a Brian Grayism? That's a Brian Grayism. <laughs> that's right. Um, so that one, and then just that they don't need to press hard. That's another thing. Or so press it all if you got a good one. Pretty much true. Um, I think another thing, if you're gifting them a pen, just making sure that they have the name, the model of the pen. Right. Because it doesn't always say it on the pen. Right. Like if you get a Pilot Metropolitan, it says Pilot Japan. But if they're run, if they're trying to figure out what pen this is mm -hmm. later on, they may have a hard time researching what it is, especially a company like yeah. Pilot. There's no so Vista many. on here. Yeah. So just as you give them the pen, just maybe give them a list or a printout or shoot them an email yeah. copy of the receipt or whatever you want to do, just so they have it for their own reference. Well, purposes. also so that they can follow up. If they have any questions, they can Google it and get a ton of information. 100%. And you can always use our team as a resource. I mean, your team all the time is saying like, you know, have a picture of the pen. Hey, what pen is this? Yeah. How do I clean this? How do I fill it? Whatever. Yeah. 
you know, we, our team is a great resource for that. And so is our website. We've got a ton of great educational materials 100%. for first time users and a lot of awesome cleaning videos as well. That's right. And uh, Fountain Pen 101 is also a tremendous yeah. resource, especially the one that's just like, how does a fountain pen work? Like the very basic, I think mm -hmm. it might even be the first video. Um, and then pen cleaning and maintenance is another like really good one to You understand. might think that someone different is doing those videos, but trust me, it's him. Yes. Good old, old, good old Brian. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that that pretty well covers it. Um, so yeah, if you, if there's anything else from your experience of having given pens or being given a pen, yeah, I'm sure you've got stories. That, yeah, no doubt. Um, but yeah, we, you know, if this really works well, I mean, we're really thinking about this a lot right now because we have a lot of new people, even still, that are coming into the fountain yeah. pen world, and we're thinking heavily about how do we curate our website, how do we produce content, how do we have a better introduction into the pen world. Yeah, and we want to keep it that way. We want to get new people into it. Like yeah. that's been one of our goals from day one. Like yeah. get people into this and then let them understand that they're not intimidating, they're not scary. You don't have to have amazing handwriting to use them. No. And you know, understanding how to give them is almost just as important as educating yeah. the folks that seek them out. Exactly, and if they can get it to the point where it's a reliable writer for them, then they're far more likely yeah. to fall down the rabbit hole with the rest of us. Yeah, so, so let us know how we can best help you spread the word, that's right. and let us know uh, via your own experiences as well. That's always helpful. Awesome, you can check out some of these things that we talked about here on GooleyPens.com. Have a fantastic Monday, and right on. To the one I lost, where are you? My heart aches in your absence, my precious Twisby. One day, we're working together as the perfect team, and now you've gone on without a trace. I hope that whoever finds you will keep your tines flossed and give you the love you so desperately. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Is this too much? Oh, it's not. Well, boy, do I have a treat for you. Follow me. You could start a new love affair with the pen and ink of your dreams if you win our giveaway. To enter, write your own letter of fountain pen lover loss and share it with us on Instagram, Facebook, or the blog. The winner will receive a $75 Goulet Pins store credit. For more details, head on over to our blog. Thanks so much. You have a happy Valentine's Day. And write on.